Uh, I'm here in Jersey. I came back to uh, visit family and friends. And I always make it a point to come back to this one particular spot uh, in, the, in, the, in Elizabeth, my hometown. Because as a kid, uh, my mom didn't have a lot of money. It was just her working. So when the bills and the rent were done and she didn't have enough to feed us, we'd come to St. Joseph's. St. Joseph's is a wonderful place. Uh, it's a service center that helps out anybody in need. I have Bernadette here with me. She runs the service center. And uh, thank you so much for having me. I really, really Our appreciate pleasure. it. Our um, pleasure. Just tell me a little bit about the history of this place. I, I actually have, do, I do have genuine questions because I, I really just came and I grabbed a sandwich and some sneakers. Right. So um, if you wouldn't mind, just tell me about sure. the history. Sure, and I think that's very common, actually. It's one of the things we want to start doing with our clients is really helping them understand yeah. how this place works. As you can see from the shot of this parking lot on what I said was a quiet day. This is a quiet day. <laughs> it is very challenging to fit everything. Okay. So our dream is to actually bring the driveway and extend it out there so you would exit onto East Jersey Street uh -huh. and then to put up another structure or two. And I say structure because we it could be as simple as like a pole barn sort of thing or an actual soup kitchen. So it, it's just community trying to help. Yeah, the, the idea of a community. I may take it in a different place, but I feel like it ties into what, what you do. Um, 50 years ago, uh, the country was kind of divided. Um, whether it be race or religion or mm -hmm. uh, belief systems, I feel personally it may be even more divided. Mm -hmm. So in St. Joseph's, it's not like there's an application process. It's just you need help and that's it. Yep. And that's what I love about it. You were mentioning the mosque and mm -hmm. that's a different religion. And there, there's different people coming together just for the idea of help. Exactly. And how do you feel about you know people being... Uh, not criminalized, but maybe mistreated because of their belief system. How, how do you, like, working at what you do, how do you feel about it? Well, that? when you come in, where, you know, our motto is all are welcome, and nobody is not human. <laughs> you know, yeah. we are all brothers and sisters, and we are here to help you, whether you're, you have documents or not, whether you're purple or green or blue, it, you know, it does not matter to us. To refer. One of the best things about this place is the success stories that come out of it. Uh, you get helped and you learn to help people. You, you come out of this place wanting to do much better. You see all the love and support that's around this place from people that probably don't even know your name. They just want to literally help you. And one of those success stories is standing right next to me. I got Frankie right next to me and he's still here. Uh, since he was a kid and he's still here helping out, volunteering. Tell me, uh, tell me about your childhood. Um, well, I've been, I started here as a volunteer, and um, I stayed here for like five years, you know, working on and off, but I always came back, and one day, the judge was like, you gotta go, you can't stay there no more. You either give you a job or you can't be there. And sister gave me a job. But um, then I started doing a lot of things I have no business doing, like selling drugs, and I was supposed to go to prison, but if it wasn't for Sister Sente, Sister Bernadette, you know, my family here, this, this is a family place. We are family, you know what I'm saying? We changed lives here, and they changed my life, you know, because I would be in prison right now. If it wasn't for St. Joseph's, that's where I would be, in prison. I was just talking to Sister Bernadette earlier, and, and I was telling her, like, she uh, she doesn't know because it's the outside looking in. Yeah. And, you know, lives are changed every day. Guys like you and me, we come from Elizabeth, New Jersey, where it's not the prettiest part of Jersey, but it's beautiful to us. That's right. You know, and, and um, we come out of it with a mindset like, you got to help, you got to help. And it does it does change your life. It does save your life because if you wouldn't have had this place, it would have been a totally different story. Yeah. You wouldn't have had the lessons that you got from here and I, the experiences with other people. You know? I tell Sister Bernadette that because, you know, um, I'm stabbed and a lot of times, like right now, I'm not the one on right now, but I like to come and give back because this place has given me so much, bro. They gave me my life back. They gave me my wife back. <laughs> this place gave me so much that, bro, sky's the limit. I love this place. I love the people here. We're brothers and sisters. We're family. And what we do here is change lives. You know what I'm saying? We try to help people every day. So I thank God you came back. It's good to see you. 
Um, there could be somebody out there watching that feels like the world is against them. There could be somebody out there watching that feels like it's all over. And is there anything, like coming from this place, is there anything you can tell them? Just hold on. Keep your faith, believe in God, and believe me, God always got his eyes on you. And um, if you can get here, we'll help you. Just if we can. Thank God you so much, you. Frankie. I love you, brother. Thanks so much, brother. And yeah, but I should add that Frank, like everyone who is staff here, works about twice as many hours as they're paid to do. So Frank is special. Bless you. <laughs> Bernadette shows me around the center and tells me how thankful she is for all the people that come in on their own time to volunteer and help those in need. She tells me about the Christmas program where the entire town donates their time, unwrapped gifts, toys, candy, clothing, shoes, and socks to give every kid who walks in there a bag full of gifts. And at the end of the year, they bring all the kids together to give them their gifts and to have a huge, huge party where Santa comes and hands them all their presents. And this is where she's showing me all the clothes. This is just a fraction of all the clothes that are donated by the community. She tells me about how important her relationships are with food markets, other churches, and other people who just want to help and how it helps the day Go by. Uh, we calculated this year for volunteer appreciation that uh, between St. Joseph's and the coalition, there's probably about over 40,000 hours of volunteer time uh, given. Purely volunteer. And purely volunteer. Um, the value, well, for St. Joseph's, I think the value was something close to a million dollars a year of volunteer. And if we were paying that for people, it would cost us a million dollars a year. And that wouldn't be a very uh, exorbitant, uh, exorbitant salary. Right, yeah, exactly. Let's take a look at the food. If that's okay. Yeah, so you sure. say today was yeah. salad day, right? Yeah, so this team came in, we, we, we saved the items that came in throughout the week that might have been appropriate. We also supplemented with some food from the food bank, from a, a local a wholesaler. So in each salad today, they have lettuce, uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, really grapes, salads, and then we're giving folks the choice of protein. Uh -huh. and, uh, And these people deserve the spotlight yes. as much as anybody, right? This is your yes. volunteer yes. team that is. Growing up when I was coming here, I honestly didn't know that all this was happening. I went there for a sandwich bag and some gently used clothing to help me get through the school year. But I didn't know how much St. Joseph's really helps. They base it only on love. They just love helping people. All these people that you see in this video are volunteers. They're here on their own time, helping put together food, bags of clothing, or anything else that somebody needs. Those bags right there were the bags that I used to grab. Some bagels and sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. The smell was so familiar when I walked in there. I'm really thankful that Bernadette showed me around because it helped me realize everything that they do to help the community. And that's what it is. It's based on the idea of community and love. These beautiful ladies right here are putting together a lunch for all their clients and all the people who are in need. They put together their sandwiches, they're cooking in the kitchen, and they just love what they're doing because they're helping somebody who's hungry or helping somebody who needs clothes or a child who needs guidance. It all happens right here in St. Joseph's. And I'm very grateful that I got to go back and visit and for Bernadette to show me around, for me to fully understand what kind of help I was getting when I was a kid. She tells me about the nutritionist 
that comes once a week and also teaches people how they should cook at home and how they should eat and what they should they should feed their kids they get help from all angles in order to help others who are in need it makes me so proud that this is in my hometown and I'm damn proud that I went there when I needed help and when my mom needed help the best part about this is that they're setting up lunch right now so those bags in the front are for anybody who comes in peanut butter and jelly, some bagels and cream cheese some juices and uh, gently used clothing is on the other side of the building but right now they're about to lead me into the kitchen to see what's really happening thankfully with all the relationships that they have with food markets and other vendors they're able to put together a huge huge lunch every day for all of their clients thankfully she gave me a tour of the kitchen they're putting together all the plates and it's not just 20 or 30 it's as many as they can do another great thing about St. Joseph's is that they have job training they help you fill out a resume they help you speak in an interview how to conduct yourself they also have the job placement program where they're actively looking for a job that would fit your qualifications and that you would qualify for Another group of amazing volunteers are Team Short in our job program, and they help clients do resumes, uh, practice interviewing, fill out online job applications. And you also have uh, people who are victims of domestic violence, also. Uh, well, those we, we work with local agencies who are serving clients in difficulty. Yeah. So, for example, the YWCA is uh, just down the road in Elizabeth. So, if they have somebody who comes to them who maybe you know fled their situation in the middle of the night and may not have clothes, um, you know, we may be able to help sort out that situation. Um, so, uh, we don't know what the circumstances of any of the people that come here really are. And we don't, it, it doesn't matter. Bernadette took me to meet all the volunteers for the job training course and hear the lovely people. So uh, Bernadette was talking to me about the job training and I have these awesome volunteers here. I have Jean, uh, Jim, Marianne? Marianne. Marianne, excuse me, and then Bob here. And Bob used to be a banker, right? Yeah, correct. Whoa. Working financial services. And uh, what made you come here to... Uh, I, I was actually invited and asked by a member of our Parish Church, local Parish Church, and uh, it was an opportunity to uh, work with people on the resume team, and uh, I, I've also uh, helped out for about six years now. They they do wonderful, uh, wonderful work here at with the Coalition and St. Joseph Social Service Center. I, I also bring some, pick up some uh, bread and bakery products once a week and bring it over. Also, that's awesome. And you were telling me about a story. Uh, yeah, I, I was uh, last time I went to uh, something unrelated to. Uh, St. Joseph, but it was a scholarship for our city children last night, and we heard one of the uh, recipients speak about how important it's been for her and her family. So uh, again, it's part of the Archdiocese, so it's involved here with St. Joseph. That's awesome. Mary, I mean, what kind of job training do you provide? Well, the resume, uh, uh, after my husband's death, uh, a friend of mine from my parish, St. Helens in Westfield, said to me, why don't you come down to Project Ready and help? And I said, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I was going through some of my husband's uh, effects, and I found an index card where he had written down his specific name, address, oh. telephone number. And I looked at it and I said, okay, obviously this is where I should go. And it was like it was written in the stars. It was like it was That's in the a beautiful stars. story. Now, Jim, what's the most rewarding part of this? Well, uh, I've, I've had the feel of being out of work many, many times. I got involved in the electronics industry. And as the products changed, the companies used to go, go away. 
So I got down here, I saw an ad in our church bulletin that we're working for people. So I came down here and I liked this, my background, the last thing I was doing was training. And I come down here and I really enjoy working with these people. I think this is great. Some people come down here and they don't know how to get started get looking for a job, and this is what we help out. I teach the class, the skills class I teach. We teach people how to find a skill. Right now we're working on the resume writing. We have that for three sessions. And I also do the interviewing class, teaching people how to interview, what's going on. And I enjoy it, and we get a big joy. Recently we had a couple of people that got jobs out of this program and sent back to us that they got jobs, and they're very happy. And it makes us very really happy to be back. We always tell our class, we hope you're not here on graduation day because you have a job. Yeah. Now, Gene, what does this do for you personally? Um, like when the day's over and you get to go home, and how many people say you've helped over these years? I, I feel that we've helped a lot of people over the years, and I get a personal satisfaction out of it just because um, I was in human resources for a very long time, and it's one of the skills I have. But, um, the best is when we're here that somebody got a job. One of my first instances was I walked into the public library in the town where I live and there was one of our students there working there and I had no idea and we just hugged each other it was such a wonderful feeling and I'm hoping to do that with everybody. You guys totally volunteer your time yeah. here just to help everybody yeah. and that's what I want to put across in this video that if you if you can't help anybody just just do it. The only time you should be looking down on somebody is when you're helping them up. And these people are a perfect testament <laughs> to what that is. Um, I'm just loving being here. Uh, Jean, uh, Jim, Maryam, and Bob, thank you guys so much for your time. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, I can't tell you how much this place means to me. And I always make it a point to go back and visit whenever I do visit home. Because it helps me stay grounded. And it helps me realize that no matter who you are, no matter how successful you are, no matter where you are in life or what kind of job you have, everybody one day will need help. It's up to us to reach out and help those who are in need. It's up to us to try to motivate other people and inspire other people to do the same. And it's up to us to show our children what you should do in a situation where you can help somebody. Whether it's a couple bucks, a hug, or just an ear to listen to their problems. <laughs> Thank you so much. If you if you can help, or if you need to help, just uh, go ahead and look at the contact information on the bottom of your screen right now, as it's rolling along in that funny little graphic. Uh, and come and help. And if you need to help, you need a piece of bread, a sandwich, or anything. Well, just put the, the plug in that you know we we have lots of loving people and and all of that. But what really also helps is uh, funding. You know, we, we do need to keep the lights on and keep the van running so we can go pick up food. That's, that's available. another thing. So I almost donate. forgot. On our website. Yeah. <laughs> uh, almost 35 years, mm -hmm. completely funded by the people with donations. Right. It's really individual donations and some um, support of faith-based communities and uh, some private foundations, but we've never gotten any government funding for any of the programs that St. Joseph's does. And it, it costs $2,000 a day to run all of the all, all of the services I talked about. Wow. So feeding all those, the, the three parts of our food program, our medicine program, the job program, the clothing, all the seasonal activities. We're also about to send kids off to summer camp for a sleepaway camp for a week. That's so, cool. so, you know, we, we don't spend money if we don't have to, trust me. <laughs> um, and it's because of these amazing volunteers and donors that we're able to, to make this happen. 40,000 hours of volunteer service in the year, almost a million dollars worth of work, and uh, no funding from the government. Just come and help. As a product of somebody who's been here, please come and help. And if you need the help, come right in. Um, Brent, thank you so much. Thank you. I love, I love I'm so glad here. you guys came back. No, no I, I love it. We're going to come by as, as much as we can whenever well, I visit. We'd love to. Uh, love to have you. Yeah. Thank, you guys. thank you guys so much for watching. Just come and help. Do the contact information and donate a dollar or 10 or 10,000 if you guys. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Way out, uh, Jim gave me this egg. And he said that inside the egg is a message especially for me. So I wanted to wait till I did that. God, help me to trust that you are always with me. Check it out.
Um, some people sometimes think that the world is against them and they feel like God isn't there, but he really is. I've always told everybody that the reason that the coach gives the hardest plays to the star player is because he knows he can handle it. Um, God won't give you anything you can't handle. I believe that. I truly believe that. When it's hard, it's going to get hard and it's going to suck and it's going to be really shitty, but you're going to be all right. If it's bad now, just know it's not over because it always gets better in the end. So if you're out there and you're going through some stuff, just know that it's not over. You're still standing. You're still waking up and your legs still work. That means you can walk forward and progress in life. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope you got something out of this. I really do. Because these past few days talking to Bernadette and meeting everybody here, I got a lot out of it. And uh, it helped me for the better. So thank you guys a lot. You guys take care of yourselves and each other. Make sure you help anybody who can. Peace.